This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin is wild, very outspoken. She had a very good job as a nurse, and she's very witty. She's a smart girl. She is a caring, helpful person. Hey, bye. Bye, honey. She would go out of her way to help you if you needed help. She would save you. Now she can't do that. She can't save herself. My name's Caitlin. I'm 27 years old. I'm addicted to crack cocaine. She just smokes it every night and every day. I don't know how she makes money to pay for her drugs. She's been arrested a couple of times for shoplifting. I know she's been affiliated with people that are drug dealers. Caitlin's lost her health, her friends, her life basically, to crack. The day that we adopted Caitlin was the most exhilarating day of my life. There was so much joy and so much love. We were ecstatic. It was great. Finally, she's now ours. Her parents were getting divorced, and that was really hard for her to deal with. Caitlin was only 14. She was Normally, very, very clingy. But once her dad and I split up, I felt her pulling away. She wouldn't even let me hug her. We wanted to share the custody. We both wanted her in our lives. That didn't bother me. I was like, sweet, I'm going to have two different houses or two different rooms. It was going to be two weeks on, two weeks off. Well, that went on for about four months, and it was, she just couldn't take it. She felt like she was being pulled in so many different directions. When we divorced, my goal was to try to stay in the family home as long as I can so that Caitlin has familiar surroundings and she can progress through high school, which are critical years. She was caught in the middle. So she told him that she wanted to live with me. Two years after the divorce, when I decided to sell the house and went to live with the, my wife now, I think that was a little bit of a blow for her. I remember she was in grade 11 and I don't know how, but uh, we ran into her birth mother of all people at a grocery store. We both stopped dead in our tracks. Caitlin had seen photo albums because her birth mother had provided pictures so she would know what her birth parents looked like, her birth grandparents looked like. I knew right away because we looked like twins. I'm like, that's my biological mother. I ended up like, going out for like coffee. She's pretty, she's young, and like she's eerily very similar to me. She's very like athletic and like she's bubbly and it was trippy. That's had a big effect on me. And I remember wondering all the time, like, what if I would have been raised by my birth mom? What if, what if, what if? It was obviously a huge deal. After they met, she became very close to her biological mom. And I know that she really loves her. It's like she is cool. And I know my unbiological mom that's raised me my whole life was like jealous because I'd go and I'd hang out with her. There was a bit of an awkwardness between the two moms. Caitlin used to strive for her biological mom's attention. I do think somewhere down deep that there's the idea that, you know, she wasn't wanted. I mean, who, who wouldn't feel a little bit of something for that? Meeting my birth mom was something that we just didn't cope with well at all. So I missed the first semester of grade 11. I did like online schooling. I graduated on time, had all my credits and stuff. Once she started nursing, it was kind of just, all right, guys, like, we don't need to go out as often anymore. Like, let's stay in a little bit. She became, like, the Debbie Downer. I paid my way through school. I got my apartment, had my own car. I was not using drugs while I was in nursing school, and I graduated nursing. She did extremely well. She got a job where she wanted. Oh, I was so excited for her. I loved nursing, engaging with the patients. I applied for all the openings for the RPNs, and then I got to where I wanted to go, which was a psychiatric hospital. My life was set. She had everything going for her. She was living life. Once she got the job, that's when she started to party again. When we were like early 20s, I did notice that she would get intoxicated and do some things that she would regret the next day, but I never thought that that would have led to anything. Friends were a really big part of her life, and she was hanging out particularly with one friend. He wasn't in the best place, but she loved him. He was a part of our whole group of friends. 
his mother and father were not married, and, you know, Caitlin was adopted, and they're a little bit of a kindred spirit almost, you know? I don't know how long he'd been using, but it was clear he was using. He was an addict, cocaine addict. She would go over to his house and use with him. They just were hanging out one night and decided, hey, let's go for a drive. And then next thing you know, she was smoking crack. We were at someone else's house. They asked me if I wanted to try it. I said, sure, I was drunk. I loved it more than he did. As soon as she started smoking crack, she was fully addicted in what felt like a blink of an eye. It spiraled out of control. Guys would feed me crack. Me and my friend were doing it. And within months, I met crackhead to the extreme. And then all of a sudden, my best friend died. I thought I'd always have him. We call each other brother and sister. Like he was like just like no one will replace him. And like thinking of that death, I just didn't cope with well at all. Her best friend, who she spent every day with, overdosed and died. She has never been the same since. My biggest regret is that we didn't talk that night. I could have somehow saved his life. I literally like, spend my entire life and have the hole in the ground just of living. She's still upset. I don't think she has ever dealt with the loss of her friend. She keeps pushing that feeling away by using. She just wants to get high again. <laughs> She's been charged with stealing liquor from the liquor store. Pass that bottle, thank you. She threatened somebody. <laughs> She got criminally charged. She's been to jail. Five assaults, assault with a deadly weapon. I have like 17 charges. <gasps> Ew, man! This is f me. This is f where's the flashlight at? Look at where's the f flashlight, man. Look at my socks. Look at my legs. This is gross, man. Look at that. Yeah. Man, you literally want to get like. When Caitlin gets to that state, people can't be around her. She's dangerous. I'm literally going to break the camera. Like, give me the camera. Give me the camera! I think her mom is one of the reasons Caitlin is still very engulfed in this drug life. She drops anything to go and help Caitlin. Me and my dad had a good relationship, but like, me and my dad don't talk anymore, which is a horrible thing. My dad disappointed in me. Good morning, family, friends. Oh, my on. Hi, Caitlin. Come on in. Literally, absolutely, 100% not doing this. Come on, stay no, in. Come on, stay in with us. No. Your family's done a lot of work to get here today. I'm not sitting here with these How about people? staying here? Come on back no, in. No, 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 no. Caitlin, give them a chance to talk to you. Please, Caitlin, I'm just... Can you just hear us out, please? Caitlin. 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 Listen to us, and then if you want to leave, you can leave, but at least hear what we have to say, Caitlin. You don't want to miss this. Oh, my God. Please, just no. please, God, Caitlin. Don't, don't, I, honey, come here, please. Honey. Katie, I love you so much. Please, you don't do this anymore. Katie, please. I'm not right now. I'm please. not in that room. No. Just get a minute of common sense, no, Katie. OK, we, no. this is serious. This is serious okay, stuff. OK, take me please. in, because I'm not a freak show. We're all here you Katie, please, Caitlin, do a little bit. One, one more step at a time. Okay, one step at a time. One step. Oh. Caitlin, come on. Stop right. talking to me like you know me. I don't know you this anymore. Like, please, like, take I've seat. already been suffocated. I've been as asphyxiated by you guys. This is strangulating me. Literally, like, get like. <laughs> all you gotta do is get in the van. All right. Maureen's in there with her. They love you. They love you. Yeah, I no situation to help myself. I know you're not in good shape. 
Don't worry about what you said to her. You didn't mean it, she didn't mean it. We're gonna take you to detox. It's a private medical detox for seven days, and then you'll get on a plane and we're going to Vancouver Island. I don't wanna listen to anything. You'll get their letters, they're going with us. Let's go to the van. You can do this, Caitlin! <laughs> Bye, Caitlin. Bye! Bye, kids. Bye. Bye, guys. I love you. I feel pretty good. There's lots of work to be done. I know that the number one thing in addiction is wanting it, and like definitely I want it. I feel awesome. I feel like a new person and refreshed. Cedars has been really good. It's giving me a new perspective on my life. <laughs> she looked so good. It's different as night and day. I thought that I may have lost her forever. My mom, I'm really looking forward to having a healthy relationship with her. Ooh, love you. And my dad, too. I think he's proud of me, and I'm proud of myself, too.